okay so I hope you've been practice practice practicing your chains and you've got your chains where they're all uniform uh, the same exact size and once you do that and you've got your holding of your your yarn and the working of your hook really well then you are ready for lesson two so get your your slip knot first so I'm gonna get my slip knot going and then I'm gonna get my hand holding my yarn now I'm ready to start doing my chains most things will will start off with chains not always but that's for a lesson way down the line um, there's other things called single crochet foundation and double crochet foundation but for the most part everything will start with the chain so it's the number one thing to master so I'm going to do a chain of let's say say a chain of six one two three four five six seven okay I'll do a chain of eight okay I have my chain of eight now most uh, not most but all when you're working with a chain you cannot go through this first chain on your hook because if you do this is where your yarn is going th through you're going to pull a loop through and it's going to be another it's going to be the same chain you cannot work in the very first chain that is closest to your hook your actual first workable chain is the second chain from the hook so you'll count one two and this is where you'll always start unless the pattern calls for you to start further down but you will never start in this closest chain to the hook so we're going to start with the second chain from the hook and we're going to start doing the single crochet so what you want to do is just insert your hook into that chain and you can see it's now on your hook now you want to do what's called yarn over and that's just because you get the yarn and you put it over your hook so that's you just want to grab some yarn yarn over and then you're going to be pulling it through this loop only not the one on your uh, not not your slip knot just this stitch is what it's called just this chain so just the first one you're going to pull it through just that first one so now you have the loop that you just pulled through the stitch and this is your beginning slip knot so you have two loops on your hook then you want to yarn over again and then you'll pull through both of these loops on your hook and that is a single crochet so you'll always have one loop on your hook which is your working loop and then you will find your next chain and you can tell that it's your next chain because you just put something inside this one this one has not doesn't have anything hanging out of it so you know this is your next stitch so go into this next chain and do the same thing you just want to grab some yarn and pull it through that first loop that first stitch giving you two loops on your hook again and then again you will yarn over and pull through to both of those loops to finish your single crochet then again find your next chain go in your next chain your next stitch grab some yarn pull through only that chain leaving the other loop alone now you have two loops on your hook and you will yarn over and pull through both of those loops and that is a single crochet so continue to work your single crochet all the way to the end you're always finding the next chain pulling up a loop 
and then yarning over and pulling through both. Again, next chain, pulling only through that stitch to bring up that loop, yarning over and pulling through both loops. Then we have one more chain left, going through the last one, pulling up a loop, and then yarning over and pulling through both loops. And that is your first row. It's called a row when you go back and forth, back and forth. So this is your first row of single crochets. Now to start your second row of single crochets, let me just move this hook out of the way. You will come to recognize this as you continue to crochet. All stitches will have, um, I've heard it called many different things. Some people think of it as a V, but it's basically this loop here. When you have squeezed it here to attach it on something, it just becomes like the two strings are here. So most of your stitches are, not most, but all of the stitches are going to be of a stitch that looks like two pieces of string together. And because you have something worked within the loop itself, it's slightly separated, but it's still the same. It's two strings with yarn in, the, in between it. You can see this here used to be this. And then when you pulled something through it, this took over. And then we just pulled something through this, so now it has, and if I did the same with this, it's also going to be like this, but with something coming through it like this. So your two strings have become what's called a stitch. And it's made up of a, a front loop, which is this one closest to you, and then the back loop, which is the loop that's furthest away from you. So you have the one that's closest to you and the one that's furthest away and it's known as the front loop and the back loop. It's very important to note um, the name of those because you're gonna run into it a lot in patterns later on. So, um, when someone says go through both loops, they mean go through both of them, having both of the strings on the, on the um, hook. So you'll be going under both of those, the front and the back loop. If it says to just go through the front loop, you'll just pick up this front one closest to you and you'll basically go in between having the other loop still here with uh, the hook knot under it. And it's the same with the back loop. You would come in from the top to grab just that back one. And the front loop is usually worked from under it, like this. The back loop is always worked from the top, back like this. So keep that in mind, back loop, top, front loop, under. But most of the time you'll be using both loops, so you just need to go right under both of them, which is always pretty easy to do. And like I said, most stitches you'll be using under both, and you'll be doing the same thing with the single crochet. Now, depending on if you're doing um, what's called the single crochet, which is only one stitch, or the double crochet, which is essentially like the single crochet done twice, depending on <clears throat> how tall your stitch is, how much you need to chain before you start your next row. So when you're working in rows, there will always be what's called a turning chain. And since the single crochet is a single, it's only one, you only need to chain one time. And that brings you up one level so that you can work the tops of the next stitch. So turn your work, and now you're ready to work. This is what's called the back of the stitch. This is the front of the stitch. The front of the stitch will obviously be easier to work with because your 
stitches are kind of tilted towards you. You can see clearly this stitch, uh, the front loops and the back loops. But when you're working at it from the back, it can be very difficult to see the front stitch. So you want to be sure when you're going through this first stitch here that you're going under both loops. So usually there's kind of a big space under the stitches when you're using a big loop, I mean a, a big uh, hook. So you can just go under in that big space and you can see that you have two stitches, two loops I should say on your hook, then you know you've gone under both of those loops. And then you'll just grab some yarn, go under both of those loops, leaving the original loop on your hook, just bringing up that extra yarn there underneath both those loops. And then you will yarn over and go through both of those loops. And that's how you've done your first single crochet on your second row. Then again, you'll do the same thing. And if you need to pull it back like this, just so you can see both your loops, then do so. But for the most part, it should be easy enough just to go into this big space and just check, make sure you have both of those loops on your hook. Then when you do, pull up yarn underneath both those loops and you'll have two loops left on your chain. Then you'll yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And you want to continue to do this down your whole row. So pause the video, keep practicing, go down, making sure you have both loops on your hook before you pull your loop through and then yarn over, pull through both. Now I wanted to hurry up and get to the end so I can show you this last one. The hole isn't as big, but it's still there because if you can just look at it, if you look at it like this, you can clearly see that you'd have just like a little bit on the end if you left it like that. So you know that this is definitely a stitch that needs to be worked. So you want to go underneath both loops of that and pull up and do your last single crochet in that. And then again, you can lay it down. And you can see that this stitch you've done is over the one underneath. You can see because it's kind of flat on the side. So when you've gotten done with your second row, let me get a little bit more yarn here. Again, since it's a single crochet, you will only chain one. And then you will turn. Now again, find your first space here, which will be your very first stitch. Your very first stitch is pretty easy to see. And you'll be repeating what you did last row, going under both loops of the stitch, pulling up a loop, and pulling through two. So pause the video and continue to practice and I want to show you again when you get to the end of the row. Now again, look at your row. You can see clearly these two strings and that is your last stitch of the row. If you do not see clearly those two strings and the stitch underneath it, this big old stitch underneath it, don't go through it. Because see, you have a little bit of, a, I'm gonna get a little closer here. You have this little bit that looks like a stitch. See, it's the loop with the string, two strings through it. This is not a stitch, this is your chain one from the beginning, the stitch here on the end. It's very small and to in, even to get into it, you would have to try to find where you need to put your hook. So it's not even really facing the correct way. All your other stitches are facing this way and this one is like underneath it, holding up this loop. A lot of people uh, when they begin, they look at this and think, oh, it's part of it, but it, uh, it's not. 
Remember at the beginning, you always do a chain one. So there'll always be a chain one at the end of your row that has lifted you up to get to the next row. It's, it's basically, it, it's the ladder. But as you can clearly see, this is the way the row is running. And this one is running kind of vertical. This one's running horizontal. So this is the, the last stitch of the row. So don't go into the little vertical stitch at the end. That's your, that's your step up. That's your chain one. So only stick with these vertical stitches. And when you've gotten done with the last vertical, uh, the last horizontal stitch, you do not go into the vertical stitch on the end. That's your chain and you are done with that row. And then simply chain one, which creates your next vertical stitch and you turn. And then again, you'll be going into the horizontal stitches. I'm moving my tail out of the way. And that's your first stitch here. Remember, this is the chain that's connected to your stitch. You're looking for the very first, I mean, that's the chain that's uh, connected to your slip knot, basically your loop. So you're looking for that very first stitch these two loops here and that is it and you can clearly see I'll count one two three four five six seven we began with a chain of eight but because you don't go into that first chain you just can't it just won't let you you had to go into the next which automatically you lost a chain right off the bat so you had seven stitches so always keep that in mind when you're doing something uh, and you want to have an even number, always add a plus one on the end. So you can do your chains of in two multiples of two or an even number, and then add that plus one if it tells you that you need to, to stick in multiples of two. And that's it. That is how you do the single crochet. So go uh, practice, practice, practice. Make sure that um, you learn the difference between the chain on the end and the stitch look itself. And when you can, when you can go back and forth in rows where your project will stay vertical on both sides and it won't, um, it won't like start to go weird diagonal one way then that means that you've learned uh, the stitch. A lot of it will be just recognizing the look of the stitch, and you will. You'll be able to look at something right away and go, oh, that's single crochet. It'll happen. Just practice, practice, practice. Make sure that you can try, try to make a scarf and try to make sure that, or a square. Just make sure that you can try to practice keeping your rows even. And that's it.